How's it going, Legends? Welcome back to the Happy Mac Podcast, your number one four driving destination podcast in Australia. Um, I'm your host, Hey Big Mac. Uh, before we get into today's episode, I just want to make a special mention to our sponsors, LJ Fab and Hamptons Media Services. We also want to thank everyone who is listening, viewing, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, following, uh, rate us five stars on Spotify. It's greatly appreciated. It helps heaps, guys. So thank you. On today's episode, it's going to be a good one. You. All right, guys. Welcome to today's episode. It's me and Andre. And we've got a special guest today, Shano79, as you know, on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and Andre just drooled everywhere. <laughs> no. This has kicked off to a great start. Oh, God. I wish we had a photo camera because I'm crying. <laughs> I'm literally crying too. We can't get our shit together to save our lives. We, we are basically all hungover, have done absolutely nothing all day, and it's two o'clock. We've done productive shit. You've lain in bed. Yeah, I did some work on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, picked up it. We got back and he was sleeping. Yeah, true. Bugger. Working on his eyelids. Oh. We can start with that. You went and bought a new car. Mm. That has basically one part to it. Yeah, there's we, nothing. We bought else. another cab for the blue U. Perfect. S- and that's what I'm going to share. Big things coming. Big things to come. Watch Game this space. Really, I really fucking hate when people say that. I know. Watch this space. Big things I coming. Actually I actually hate it. You know why? Because oh. when I say it, then fuck all happens. I know. <laughs> and 99% of other people that say, watch yeah. this space. Big thing coming. I'm Nothing just, happens. I'm just, I don't want to tell anyone about it because it's just going to be like, we're just going to do it. And then it's, it's going to be there. Face. And then I'm going to release a YouTube video surrounding how it was done. No, I'll release a YouTube video because you're hopeless at it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of work to do. So, Shano. Anyway, on to our guest. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> so, who are you? What do you do? What do you like to do? What do you own? No, hey guys, I'm Shano79. Um, I have a 79, obviously, as the name states. It's not rocket science to work out. But I also own a 60 and a little Subaru as a daily. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Subi gang. Tell us a little bit about the 60, the 79, and not much about the Subi. <laughs> now, the Subi's not important. But it is a fucking weapon, to be fair. Like, I've had the thing wheel lifting on fire trails and stuff. Goes anywhere. How times I've heard someone say, it's a fucking weapon, and then the weapon in question is a Swift or a Subaru, like an Outback or a Forester. Nah, the XV goes good. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to take it on the beach one day. Um, no way. Anyway. Yeah, so I've had the 79 for, it'll be three years in October. So, yeah, just over two and a half years. Um, and, yeah, I've taken a wheeling, I beat the hell out of it. It's dented and scratched up and it takes me wherever I want to go. And I, I don't know, I just... What? Push it to its limits, that's for sure. I've definitely broken my fair share of parts and stuff. What's your major modifications on the 79? Um, it's stock. It's stock. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got a four-inch lift, um, different radius arms. And, yeah, that's like that's pretty much it. It's got bigger flares, tyres. Pretty standard. Yeah, just the standard mods that you do to them. Yeah. Just help you out on the tracks and stuff. And you got a few changes coming up for it? Yeah, I, I hope so. Hope so? I not saying that yet? I can't really talk about it yet. It's uh, on soon paper. find out again yeah. in the future. Yeah, it's had a few Watch little changes space. over the <laughs> past couple of months too. And um, picked up Rhino Rack as a sponsor. So That's Andy. It's getting set up. It looks like a big touring rig now. It's good. Yeah. Uh, what about the 60? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the 60. Oh, my God. The 60 has been the biggest nightmare. I've had that for, like, two years now. Mm. And I was so, so excited to, like, build a project car after I'd started modifying the 79. Had the 79 for, like, eight months. And then I was like, I want to build another car. I want to do something. I wanted to build an 80 series originally. And um, then this bloke I worked with ended up having this like pretty mint condition, 60, barely any rust on his farm. And 
like I just saw a couple photos of it. He was like, yeah, it runs good. I was like, right, I'll give you two grand right now for it. I'll give you the other, uh, I've paid two and a half for it. I said, I'll give you two grand now. I'll give you 500 bucks when I come pick it up. He's like, don't you want to see it yet? I was like, no, I fucking <laughs> trust you to Perfect. not screw me over. I work with you. You'd be, uh, you'd be pretty hard pressed to screw me over when we work together, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, just went and picked it up and brought it back. I, I originally was going to do all the like strip back and everything myself when mm. I started um, paint stripping it and like pulling the interior apart and everything. Just realized like it was a bit out of my depth. Yep. Um, and so I ended up meeting a bloke at the snow who was a mutual friend. Mm. And owned a body shop and um, so convinced me, he convinced me to take it in there. And um, I think it was there for about six months and I just, like, I wasn't seeing progress with it, like, as the time went on. And he had these really, like, terrible people working with him and, like, couldn't hold, couldn't keep people yeah. around. Um, and then, yeah, I was... It was just strange. It was the workmanship was not good at all. Like, yeah, right. I'd given him a whole rear quarter to stitch in mm. to my cab. Yeah, because um, it had a big hit on that rear quarter on the driver's side, and um, yeah, he just he ended up cutting out like a square out of the bottom of the cab. It's hard to explain. It was like the tiniest little bit where it was actually dented. He cut out and stitched in, yeah. but the whole rear was warped and. Like, yeah, yeah, it was, it was terrible. And I just looked at it and I was like, what are you going to like bog over that and straighten it all out? Like, that's a lot of work. Mm. And it just, it was just shit stuff. And the turning point really was I rocked up one day and there was a giant almost dent in the roof Mm. and the whole roof bracing was bent down. Yeah. And I only noticed it because I was standing up a little bit higher than the car. Like, normally the car sits taller than me, so I wouldn't see it. Yeah. Um, and I was standing up higher than the car. I said, what the <clears> hell <throat> is that? Like, why yeah. is my roof dented? He's like, oh, like, we dro- one of the boys dropped a um, RHS long time from the forklift Fucking on the hell. roof. And they had already Whoa. pushed it up as well. Like, yeah. they had already pushed it back out so that I hopefully didn't see it. But, yeah. like, it was still a massive dent and the whole bracing on the internal, it was down, like, I don't know, 20 mil. Fuck Jesus. That. And they'd already tried to fix it. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, like, we'll fix it. I was like, no. Nah. I said, I'm coming to get the car tomorrow. Yeah. I said, you can pay me for that roof. I'd pay, I'd given him five and a half grand at that point. Jesus. I said, Ooh. you can pay me two grand for the roof. and Because he wouldn't have spoken to me if I asked him for all the money back. Yeah. And he probably would have damaged the car more, to be mm. fair. Um, and then when I got there, I was like, you got to give me all this money back. He's like, no, nah, like, I'm, I'm only giving you the money for the roof back. Mm. So and in reality, it probably cost me more than five and a half to get it all repaired again. Jesus. And there's I'm, some shitty body shops. out There, there is. There is. It is so dodgy. And cause it was my first build. I didn't know mm. like anything about it. So I didn't realize I was getting yeah. screwed. Like it was, it was such a shame, but. I was really, really lucky with the second shop that it went to to get everything done, Ultimate mm. 4x4 in um, Minto, so they're like yeah. Campbelltown Way in Sydney. They looked after me so much because they knew I'd been screwed over so badly and they did everything right. Yeah, it was, that's good. And it looks amazing now. Like yeah, I actually can't wait now. to get into it and get it up to Queensland and f- kind of finish it off, you know, because... Mm. It's been hard with the move to like move all the cars. And yeah, I have no space where I am at the moment, so it's kind of on the back burner for a little bit. So what's done now to the sixty, and sort of where's it at? So it is fully rust repaired now, um, and resprayed the ex- exteriors, resprayed. That was all done by Ultimate. Yeah. I repainted the interior myself because I am blacking out the whole interior. So I blacked out the dash, like I blacked out everything. I'm going to get all the seats re-trimmed properly, black. Um, so proper resto mod. Yeah, I'm going to get like, um, yeah, it'll be definitely resto mod, like not full resto. The original colour of the car was red, Yeah. like bright red. And um, I've turned it to the new Toyota Merlot, which is on the um, nice. 200s and the 79s. 
Yeah. It looks really, really, really tidy and like it's just it's a bit different, you know. Yeah. It like it'll it up. be good. It and will be different once it's done. And you kept the seventy nine bonnet. Yeah, I got a seventy nine yeah. bonnets. Um, I got that fully molded into the sixty bonnet. So Ultimate did all that as well, and like. That is proper. Like you see some people do it and it's not welded in and braced properly. It's not clean, yeah. That mm. thing is braced proper. Like everything mm. was done right and yeah. it looks so good on the car. Yeah. What um what mode are you putting in there? LS or V8 or something like that? I'm not going in LS. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm different. I'm be different. <laughs> no. Everyone's been giving me so much shit. Like, I don't know. By everyone, you mean me. Just give Yeah, me just you all day. <laughs> We've been talking about it the whole drive today. Yeah. Um, I am thinking of putting a petrol V8 from a 100 series. Oh, yeah. That'd be different. Yeah. Something cool. I think, like, <clears throat> keep keep maybe. it, like, stock, sort of, like, Toyota. Yeah, well, I always want to keep it Toyota. Like, I think the biggest thing that everyone's yeah. been saying to me is, do a Barra or do an LS. Oh. I'm like, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> Every fucking dickhead and his mates doing a barra in yeah. a fucking patrol or old car or yeah, something like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it, it probably would end up being cheaper to do an LS or a barra, but mm. I don't know. That that stuff is all expensive anyway. I may as well yeah. just like I'm. Not, I don't want to listen <clears throat> to anyone tell me how to build my car. Like exactly, Run it's my race. fuck up. <laughs> if I do it all and it doesn't work, that's on me. Like it's my yeah. decision. You know, hundred percent. Oh, yeah. let's switch up topics a bit. What's your sort of favourite type of wheeling and trips and stuff you do? You know me. I've dragged <laughs> you out to my kind of wheeling. I think I scared Marco the first time like, he visited Marco? in Sydney. No yeah, dead set. Way. He didn't. I don't think he realised like the kind of wheeling that we were doing, like the proper rock crawling stuff I'd, I'd in cars that weren't meant to be rock crawlers. Mm, yeah. Like. So anyone that knows a 79, tall centre of like, gravity, yeah. Really shit on the off canvas stuff, rock steps, anything like that. That's exactly where Shano went. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Always bending tail shafts. Yeah. And that, shaft. that step, yeah, literally, yeah. the step that I actually got up that day, mm. that was the first time I'd ever gotten up that yeah. rock step. Mm. And I couldn't do it again. We went out to film at Weenie, like with yeah. a proper film guy, and like I couldn't get up it again. Yeah. Like it's just it's all I love the tracks that change every single time you do them and you can mm -hmm. pick different lines out there and like it's all rock crawling. It's not I don't like soft shit. Mm. Like a beach driving, yeah, like we D went to DI yesterday. Scenario, yeah, though. it's different. Like I don't like mud. Yeah. And I don't oh. like my alternator definitely doesn't like mud either. S swamp, <laughs> swamp driving sucks. Yeah. yeah no. Like no, that's that's not my idea is, of fun. Rocks is definitely the Best range to be driving on. I just love it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Technical, articulated, yeah. all that sort of stuff. I crawling. mean, it, it is hard in the 79s because they're so mm. heavy too. Yeah. And then, like, not having the coils in the rear for me makes all the difference because my leaves, like, catch up on everything. But I still yeah, give it a know. go. Like, that's yeah. the, what I like to do. And if I can't get it, like, fuck it, try again when the tracks change. Mm. What's, what's probably the most favourite, like, track you've ever driven? Um. If it's a public located track that you don't want to hide the secret of. Yeah, well, like um, G's Arm, where we went. Like, mm. it's all going to be Sydney tracks because I don't really know any yeah. tracks around here. Um, G's Arm in Sydney and um, Lithgow. No. Like, um, was it Zigzag and, and Noon State Forest there? There's a track there. I call it the Scar, mm. but it's like... It's like this tiny, short little track, and every single time I went out there, it would change. Like, there was a big step. There was yeah. a right side to it that was literally just a V, and people would climb that. I was trying to gear myself up to do that in the cruiser, but it would have done, like, door damage. Like, yeah. it would have dented the doors for sure. Jeez. And that's the kind of, yeah, stuff that what's, is my favourite. What's the worst thing you've ever broken on a track? I don't know. I think yeah. I did, like, one day we went out to Lithgow, I did both front hubs and mm. the tail shaft. Yeah, right. And drove home with the tail mm. shaft again. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I think that's yeah. probably the worst. I haven't really done anything that yeah. bad. You've done CVs and stuff, CVs, right? CVs, like, yeah. all the time. Yeah. But nothing Pretty common crazy, on 79s, yeah. as I, I know him as well. Yeah, <laughs> I have, like, three spare hubs that I carry in the car yeah. now, and I carry a set of front. CVEs, yeah. axles and rear axles Which I as well. 
Oh, you gotta replace them. <laughs> yeah, I left oh my, my axes up at your house. Oh no, <laughs> I yeah. forgot. I totally forgot. I still have that little <laughs> broken stub sitting on my workbench. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a good little. It's so many. common for seventy nines to do yeah. like front axles, not so much mm. rear, but yeah. Well, after two years, that was my first axle that I broke. Yeah, just before we went out to think. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so what sort of got you into four-wheel driving? Alrighty, Legends, we interrupt this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor, LJ Fab. Are you looking for a new tray, canopy, or dog box for your rig? Make sure you get over and see the team who offer flexibility and custom design to suit your needs. They're a few hours west of Brisbane, located in Chinchilla, and they're shipping Australia wide. Now, they've got a few spots left in September and bookings after that, so make sure you're getting quick and get your booking ready for your rig. Uh, they've also given us a discount code. So if you mention Hey Big Mac Podcast, he's going to take 10% off your next tray. So terms and conditions apply and get in quick. Thanks, Legends. Back to today's episode. You. Well, my parents had always taken me on trips and stuff since I was born. Like, we did Fraser, we did the Cape, we've done... Um, like Birdsville and Big Red and mm. just always been traveling and, and going places with the cars and camping. So that kind of definitely got me interested in it. And um, so when I was 18 or when I was just 19, I bought a N70 Hilux, a 2007 yeah. model. And um, I started wheeling with that just at the local tracks and I kind of realized like once I started to learn more about the cars and I was like oh okay IFS versus having a solid axle like it was either um sass the Hilux or buy an already solid axle car mm. and um because I had a space cab I, I really I was like I'm not interested in sassing that I wanted a dual cab mm. and um yeah then the 79 came up and I was like yeah that's it, I'm buying that, like, ended up selling the Hilux and was, like, like, a 79 was always my dream car, so I just ended yeah. up buying that. And I really started getting into full driving more when I got the 79 because I, yeah. like, I wanted to push the solid axle more wanted and see it. see where I could go with it, you know. And it's, it's fucking got me some pretty good places and it's put me in some pretty sketchy situations too. Yeah. So just learning Which the happens. limits of the car has been the biggest thing. Yeah. Where's um where's some places you want to take the seventy nine, like bucket list spots? Go wheeling. Well, I haven't done Fraser in mm. the seventy nine yet, so I really want to do Fraser in my own car. Yeah. Um and the Cape as well. Cape York, Fraser. Yeah, that's... What about like Morton and stuff like that? Same yeah, sort of I'd like to do Morton as well. Um like mm. everywhere pretty much. I'd love to do like a proper lap. Yeah. Vic eventually. High Country. It's it Cruz has been to Vic High Country, yeah. It's it loved that. it. Like yeah. Billy Goats and Blue Rag Trick, they were like just ate it up. It was in, so in good. In the snow or not in the snow? Not in the snow, no. Yeah. It was bloody cold though still. I still want to get my ute into the snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. That would be cool. Um, who do you look up to in the four-wheel four drive industry if you do look up at anyone? Like who do you sort of role model off? Um, even if it's not four wheel drive related. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, just, I yeah. never really. Do you like I don't know. Like, like Bree, yeah. Bree and Bridge. Like they yeah. have. I've obviously wheeled with them and mm. gone on red dirt before. They were like always doing pretty good and like yeah. setting a good example for people of like mm. what you can do and yeah, you know, just being themselves and not not being dickheads. Like mm. they are just. Go out there, wheel, get shit done, and try and keep it professional. Yeah, keep it professional. I, I love that. Like, yeah. and they were so great to. It was so cool to go on the show and like see them in action. Like even behind the camera, they're such lovely people. And yeah, like that. That would definitely be the role model. Mm. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, what's it like being a girl in a male-dominated industry? Um, it's. I don't know. You get judged a lot, I feel. Yeah. Like, Don't get taken seriously. I, yeah, I see that a I lot. I think so. I definitely, like, it's, I don't know. I, I feel like that a lot of girls that do try and take the full drive sort of industry and scene, that 
when they do take it seriously, they don't get sort of accepted seriously. And there's a lot of people that are open about it if, you know, there is dickheads calling them out and all that sort of shit. And uh, how do you deal with it all? All the hate and I just negativity. block people. <laughs> like, I don't That's want that easy. kind of negativity in my life. Like, if yeah. I do, if someone is just saying, like, oh, you're a fucking idiot or, like, just messaging me. But, like, it t- most of the time it's uncalled for too. Like, I haven't done anything to mm. warrant the hate. And they'll just come on and send me a stupid message that ends up being in the requests or something. It's like, yeah. oh, I don't know. I can't even give an example. But there is just idiots out there all the time. And my block list is, like, a mile long because I just don't mm. have time for it. There's like, too many of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. t- I think TikTok is the worst for it. Like, I feel like people on Instagram, mm. they want to follow me. That's why they follow me, because they like seeing my content. People yeah. on TikTok, you just get shown anyone's shit on the For You page, and they're like, oh, fucking, you've yeah. got a 79, or leaves don't flex. Like, well, oh, 79s are oh. bricks and stuff like that. I'm like, Everyone's fuck gone, off my yeah. page then. Don't don't watch the video. TikTok yeah. just seems like such a um, toxic it like is. I, I actually deleted crazy. it. I was at yeah. like 16K on TikTok or something and I deleted it for like six months and I got it back because yeah. of cross networking across yeah, platforms. Content. Like that's the only reason. I don't even post on TikTok really, but I yeah. just have it there. Mm. Yeah, I will not download TikTok and that. It's just uh, not in my interest, but. It's just people it's are rude. Just, yeah. People are rude on TikTok and mm. it, it, like I don't let that shit get to me, but it it's, is kind of disheartening sometimes. Yeah, it's either, it's either you get that or people will just, because your car's on TikTok, they'll start associating it as being just a TikTok rig. It's like, mm. oh, okay, yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, like, the, I don't one, do anything else other than yeah. just more crawl. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> the biggest like, one I get, everyone always, I'll get on TikTok, you'll grow heaps of followers and all that stuff. No. And I go, it's not the audience I'm chasing, though. No. It's, yeah. you, you're chasing that short attention span audience that has no genuine interest in yeah. actually yeah. who's behind the camera. It's, Oh, what's the video they've put out? Exactly. And whereas Instagram, I find it's more of who's the creator of that, My, not, yeah. not what what is it. Like you yeah. get the meme reels on Instagram where it's like you get the sound bites and the noises where you'll yeah. make a video to that. But it's See, not my, so much the same. My content in general is not geared towards people who have short term, like short um, attention spans. It's more people who are actually interested in the builds, I guess, yeah, exactly. detail in what's going on. Yeah. So, like, like, that's, m- yeah, no. <laughs> my Instagram is, like, it's not just my car builds. Like, it's my life. That's my yeah. brand. That's what I do. Like, if I go to the beach, I'll post I'm at the beach. If I go to a concert, that's what I'm doing. It's not just about my car. Yeah. Like, and I don't want it to be. Like, that's just, mm. I don't know, it's yeah. people following me for my lifestyle. and. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Everyone's got an opinion and it's good, but you can have a shitty opinion that's just hate and negativity. Or you can have a good opinion as to if you're building something, why are you doing this? How's that work? Yeah. I want to try this myself. There's proper con- constructive feedback that you can get for having an opinion. Yeah, exactly. Some people just don't get that. So, like, I um, recently put parabolic leaves in the 79 mm. and I got a lot of messages about people that are genuinely curious about them on Instagram. Yeah. And um, they were they basically it was just saying, oh, you've got parabolic leaves. How are they? I said, well, if you're trying to do what I do and run those kind of leaves, it doesn't work. Like, yeah. And you've seen how they work. Yeah. Like, it's just, I'm Very stabbing well. into rocks. It's holding me up more than it is helping me. So, like, They it's, might be comfy on the highway or something. They're not yeah. going to be good Oh, they're off-road. so comfy, but, like, it's it's useless to me, to be fair. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'm just going to rip them out as soon as I buy a new set. Yeah. Um, what do you hate most about, like, just four driving industry that you see online? I think it's it's the scene is so different yeah. in Sydney compared to Queensland. I think yeah. Queensland's a like? lot of like everyone just goes to the beach, which is cool. Yeah. Like I love that, and like we went yesterday to DI, mm. but it's all a, a lot of all I see is like, oh, we're at the beach, or we're at the doof, yeah, or we're at a meet, and people are doing skids. Yeah, I know that's probably stereotypical, but like I know because there is you guys that are doing camping and touring, very, yeah, but like yeah. majority is oh we're at the beach, oh we're at a door. Like yeah, yeah, that's, that's a all very I've seen. Gold Coast four drive scene in yeah. general. Yeah, um, it's different all over the place. It like, is different. Yeah, that's yeah. just a stere- That's a generalization, and I'll probably offend people by saying <laughs> that because like I know there is people out there that are hard, hard wheeling still. Yeah. 
But I think like just the dynamic, even the tracks and stuff, I haven't seen that many tracks yet, but yeah. like it's so different. Went to Glassy and it is literally mud and slop and you're sliding and it was well, not yeah. my cup of tea. There's a few different tracks. Yeah, I know. Just gotta i got to get go. to them. <laughs> when, when we but took you out to Glassy House, we only did like the back like Wombat yeah. trails and Wombat holes, whatever everyone calls them. Shit little spot, but it's just fun to have a play around in. Yeah. We need to go out and like show you around like, Little red, big Proper, red, and all that. Yeah. When because you can go out there nearly any given day if you know where you're going. Go out there and just look, watch yeah. people driving, and it's fun no, as well. I'd love to do that, but yeah, like um, there's a lot more like groups, and it seems like somewhat clicky mm. in it Queensland. Is, whereas like yeah. New very, South Wales, we yeah. kind of it wasn't yeah. like that. Like I feel like we kind of just were like, oh, who's doing this track, or we're going to this track. Like who wants yeah. to come? This is what you got to do. Um, lockers, winch. And yeah. like have some fucking sense about you, and most of the time we wouldn't get like idiots coming out. Yeah. We put together a decent crew who knew what they were doing and were safe mm. on the tracks, and just mm. yeah, it just it's the dynamic is so different. I, I see the difference of like everyone sort of knows it themselves. Southeast Queensland is like just content based influencing whatever you yeah. want to call it, but it's yeah. just like if you've got anything to do with like the four drive sort of car scene, camping, touring, whatever, it's. In southeast Queensland, all the biggest brands are around here. Like, unless you're in a major capital city, you're not going to find them really anywhere else. Yeah. So it's, I think it works. There's a reason why a lot of big name YouTubers are all around, like either Sydney, Brisbane, yeah. Gold Coast, Sunny Coast. Yeah, so. a lot of people left like Sydney and Melbourne mm. and stuff and have come to Brisbane, Gold Coast. Like, and it's a good spot to live because everything's so close. Yeah. Like, you're in the middle of Australia, so it's not hard to get anywhere. And yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. What What was your reason behind moving to Queensland over um, Sydney? Well, um, like I was living with my parents and they're selling in Sydney at the moment. So the plan was always to move to um, Queensland, but it was pending, like, if Mm. I got a job up here or not. Yeah. I did get a job in Perth, but it was FIFO from Sydney. Oh, and I that. didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't want, I was kind of over Sydney. Like I didn't want to stay mm. there. Like it was, it would have been too expensive for me to stay there on my own mm. when my parents left. And um, like, I just, I don't know. I've wanted, I've lived in Queensland. I lived on the Gold Coast for eight years. So I always wanted to move yeah. back to Queensland. And yeah, it just worked out like really well, like I, that I ended up getting the job that I wanted up here and yeah, I, I don't know. I love it. I've only been up here for a month and a half, but. Yeah. <laughs> Straight into it. Yeah. Um, what other future plans and stuff do you have? Like where do you want to sort of see yourself go with everything you're doing? Like do you have any goals to try and achieve over the next year or something or? Definitely get into the youtube stuff more like i have just yeah. recently started and it's and it's trash like i feel like it's my hard. video was so trash <laughs> i used to love editing and stuff so like i know how to do it all but yeah. it, it is just time and effort mm. and you know like it, it was something that i, I didn't like had like in the background i was planning it but didn't really want to get into it full on but now i have the time with work and stuff like hmm. I got a job in the mines so work week on like seven on seven off yeah and then have that week to travel and film and do yeah, YouTube as well let's like make it a side hustle hopefully make some money off it but if not have fun while I'm yeah doing it you know it, trying to expand sort of from Instagram to yeah else. Like you got a decent following on Instagram which is 30 something k 36k I think it was yeah so like you've already got an audience there on Instagram. It's just trying yeah. to trying to cross platform, like what's the right word for it? Like move all cross your followers. Cross promote and stuff. Yeah, yeah, move all your followers from Instagram to then get them across to YouTube is so bloody hard. And oh yeah, like people, I know that people won't yeah. spend the time. Like I I genuinely like I I don't watch that much YouTube like mm. myself. So I don't know. I feel like I need to watch a bit more and learn a bit more from other people what they're yeah. doing before I start it myself. Yeah. The problem is trying to also get your your taste of videos out there that's not copying someone else. Like Exactly. No one can go out and just copy like what, I don't know, Whistling Diesel's doing or like Red Dead. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> that not. too. 
But like he's just like you've got to find your own niche of how everything works. Yeah. And so it's it's hard. I'm I'm still going through the same thing too. Like we're trying to get into YouTube and that, like Heavy Mac and Piss Bus. Yeah. It's, people just yeah. love watching people break cars, I reckon. Wheeling. Like that's what wheeling, yeah. yeah. And especially like with such an expensive car like the 79s. Yeah. I feel like people froth like mm. watching you break that because they're just yeah. like, Haha, this person is spending money on fixing this thing now. Like, <laughs> Well, the biggest thing is like just using a 79. Like my content, as soon as I'm out in the bush, wheeling it, doing anything like that, people love it. Mm. But anything that's just like, oh, yeah, you're sitting at Bunnings Car Park or whatever. It doesn't, those photos don't go as well because you're not in the atmosphere. Like you don't give the vibe off of, yeah. oh, this is just another show car that goes to every four wheel drive show around the country and is just displaying products for brands that are never going to get used for their intended purpose. And it's like, yeah. um, yeah. like my, like I put, we went to the beach yesterday, so I posted a bikini photo. My, yeah. my, like that didn't actually go that well. Like my wheeling yeah videos where yeah. I'm breaking the car and mm. beating the hell out of it and doing my tail shafts, mm. they go so much better. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that's also what people want to follow, want, that's what they follow me for. Well, you sort see. of build your audience intended around what you want to go with in the future. Like you've built a wheeling sort of for the audience. They're going to be there for that. You're not building, I don't know, I'm going to put it out there, an OnlyFans audience where people are just coming for the tits and ass. Yeah. Like that's, yeah, well. there's a different scene. Like I'm not going on, Instagram every day and uploading a selfie of myself because that's not exactly who I am. <laughs> but yeah. I'll, I'm more than happy to put myself out there and stand in front that. of a camera and film. Instead of putting up a story of text, I'll just say it. I'll just talk to the camera and put it up. And, yeah, that's I been the know. hardest thing because I know you're yeah. like so comfortable with being in front of a camera, but like I haven't spent that much time in front of a camera. So for me yeah. to like go and put myself in front and go, hey guys. I, I just don't get worried about what no. like I already, you know, what us boys are like. like we just, I'm not worried about what people think of me because I already shit on myself enough anyway if it gets to it. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, it's, it's pretty hard to run someone down when they can run themselves down harder than what you can to them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> shitty analogy, but... No, yeah. yeah. Oh, 100%. It's, for me, it's always just like, if I'm having fun with the boys, I'm posting about, like, if I'm posting yeah. about it, I don't give a shit what anyone thinks because that was yeah. just me and the boys having fun. It's, it's almost like a favorites memory folder yeah 100%. it's the best way to put it you put everyone puts their highlights out there and everyone sits there and thinks oh you, these people are living the best life they're going everywhere they're traveling no one sees what's going on in the background how you're working like yeah. the last couple of weeks you've been yeah, three, three weeks, weeks straight in, yeah, three like weeks on but straight. over that three weeks you've been po posting content that would yeah. make it look like you're not even at work yeah so yeah that's i don't know a lot of people do that now and they're like, look at me, I'm living the dream. And it's like, it's, yeah. it is fake. Like you're, you're looking at them going, oh, how, how are they traveling all the time? How do they afford this? And like, yeah. they're literally working Monday to Friday, yeah. but it's, they I, have enough content. We go them. on a one or one and a half week trip out to the desert and we've got six weeks of content there. Yeah. And people think you're on a six week trip out in the desert. Like yeah. it's, yeah, I used to get it all the time. I'd post a photo up at the beach on a Wednesday and people go, oh, it must be nice not working. Yeah. yeah I, go, get like, that. I still get that a fair stupid? bit. Like people like, go, I was like, oh, you post so much, you never work. It's like, dude, I work. You work your ass off. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I'm like, when I'm actually in my shed, that's all I do is work on cars. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah it's, it's hard. No. <laughs> but it's, you can't please But everyone. like, I don't uh, know. It is like with that, there has to be some sort of like accountability and transparency. Like you yeah. still have to be real with people and be like, no, like it's mm. like social media is fake. Yeah. Like it's like, like if you say you're, you're posting every yeah. day saying that you're traveling mm. and you're not like, there has to be some kind of transparency. Like, yeah, yeah. we still work and we work our asses off to afford to See, do the trips that we do. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of people that live on the road and do live and travel full time. Yeah. But whether they've got some online business that they're running or they've, you know, they've got a business back home that's being pre-managed. someone else, yeah. They, they still have to work. They're, they're still sitting there every afternoon or every, I don't know how they might have it set up, but once a week or twice a week and they're still doing work remotely. Like you can't ever get away from it. And yeah. I, I sort of do a similar thing trying to run my page as more of a, like a full driving touring lifestyle sort of setup is that you might not see exactly what I'm doing for work to make my money 
on the actual page itself, but you're going to see my stories. Like I'm going to be out there with Jake Fenson and we're going to be in these sick locations above, you know, stadiums. We could be over at yeah. the Somerset Dam. You guys work in some cool places. We get some sick spots to work and like even <laughs> yeah. taking the utes out there and I've never had to go to a job before where I've had to be twin locked using a winch, recovering myself with a trailer on <laughs> just to get down a fence line. Yeah. That's cool. It makes me yeah. miss working. Like, when I was but you're sore. never going to see that on my main page. It's oh, always yeah. going to be on the yeah. stories. Like yeah. it's even though it's you content and stuff like that. But mm. yeah, it's you, I try not to hide the bad shit, the broken shit. Like try and be real because yeah. it gets more engagement too. Like yeah. people love it. Yeah. Whenever I break my car, people seem to love it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, the way I see it is, no one that follows me follows me to see what I do for a job because it's pretty. Fucking boring in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and yeah, like, I always say, I was like, I don't, it's not a car page. That's just my life because that's actually all I do when I'm not working is just work on cars. And yeah. Play with cars, so, <laughs> pretty much. It's yeah. the same for all of us. It's work on the cars. We'll go to work, work on the cars, travel with the cars, break the cars, fix the cars. Pretty like, much. <laughs> it's a do it all cycle. over again. It is a vicious <laughs> yeah. cycle. Legit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, we're not afraid of breaking and fixing. That's for sure. Definitely oh. not. It's a bit <laughs> hard without a hoist the day now. After King this trip. Oh yeah. my god! Literally in one day. I or can't rebuilding an axle before I drive three Sucks something so thousand k's out to think. <laughs> so hungover, I did not want a bar of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. It. What else have we got to add? What's your favorite? Uh, I can never word that one. No. Nah. A place other than Australia, if you could, if you were in a position to take your car, where would you want to go? Oh, yeah. I know that, like, I want to take my car to New Zealand eventually because I know I can get the car yeah, there. Yeah, I thought I was of that one. talking to yeah. Macro about that a couple of weeks ago. Like, we, I know you can definitely take your own car to New Zealand. Mm. Um, okay. It's pretty cheap to even ship them out yeah. to America. It's like five grand. Yeah, I would Jeez. love to take it to America, but I don't think it would handle the tracks that they do, like... <laughs> they're like tr shoots and no, stuff that me. they're doing the jeeps like that's insane I, I, I honestly reckon we'd be fine Sh Shano, there is not just that there there is everything there. i know because yeah, so, remember toyota brought out the Tacoma there and there is still mm. idiots that think that is the top type of four drives <laughs> ifs it's a and motherfucker fold ranger trust me <laughs> the 79 is gonna love it yeah yeah, yeah there's no, all there, sorts there's of so much that would yeah. be really yeah. cool i think that the thing there would be cost like it is doable mm. obviously pay Patriots done it and taken all their cars over there. Cost. Patriot, four and if you were doing, seven, everyone. Yeah, but yeah. like, m if you're doing multiple states, that's permits for each state. That's shipping yeah. costs, and I, I believe it's upward of thirty grand just to get the car there. Well, I wonder how uh, Matt Baker did it from Explore Life because he's he bought a Ram from over there, bought it over here, built it, took it back there, and it's registered over there. So that must be almost like a living situation over there. Like he doesn't have to get those permits and whatnot. Yeah, it would just be like red there sure. probably. It'd be interesting to get Matt on and talk to him about yeah, how the would. logistics of that trip sort of goes. Like mm. We're going to have to start looking into that stuff for possibly next year. Yeah, doing it ourselves. Mm. Okay. Uh, I actually really want to go full driving in Vietnam because apparently they have some wild yeah, tracks they do, and I stuff. Like, yeah. When I was over there, I was only over for 10 days last year when I went, but like they actually, I was searching it up and they do four wheel drive tours and yeah. you can drive yeah. over there and stuff in the mountains and they have wild tracks. I was like, mm. that would be so much fun. There's that one American YouTube channel, Dirt Every Day. They went over there and yeah. built a Suzuki, what was it, Suzuki Samurai? It was, like a, it was basically it was a, the Ute version of a Sierra, but it's yeah. totally different there. They built one there and wheeled it up there with them. And it was like the coolest episode ever. Yeah. That would be actually so cool. Literally, like, like, a like all those videos country. that you see on Instagram and Facebook and stuff of people like driving into literal jungle tracks. mud in, in yeah. the yeah. jungle and stuff. And yeah. like the snorkels are like way up here because they just send them, they're like fully underwater and stuff. Like yeah. that's crazy. I, I'd love to see what happened with the JMAX six by six jungle trek vehicles. I'm not, I think they might've gone to Indonesia somewhere mm. Yeah. and they just did these like crazy builds that you could never do in Australia yeah. and just send them over there. It'd be cool to see what those builds are doing. Cause they do the randomest cars over there. Like oh, yeah. there's one Hilux I've been following lately and it's made the rounds on like Aussie social media and it's a sassed 
N70 Hilux. It's painted sandy top. It's fucking cool as fuck. I don't know who posted the other day. I ended up finding the owner's page and following him. And he's just over there wheeling the shit out of it. But it's just fucking cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just there is so much more than like just Australia. Australia. Like, Australia's yeah. that big that <clears throat> none of us, I don't think any of us have actually done a trip around Australia complete. No, no definitely not. Like I still want to do WA and all that sort of stuff yeah. and yeah. never got there. I think yeah, my yeah. two de- destinations after I've, done a fair bit more exploring Australia is definitely Dubai and America. Oh my god, that why did cool. I think of that? I've been thinking about that for so long. Go, go I want to go to Dubai the and yeah. do the Take dunes. The class oh my god, that <laughs> would be the go. Like yeah. you just get them on their side on two wheels. Yeah. Like I want to go on a proper full drive trip with like the fully built patrols and stuff yeah. like just hoops on the dunes. Those guys are wild. Yeah. That's next level. Proper yeah. wild. Definitely yeah. something that w- it would be so cool to do like a buggy build, like a yeah. Baja buggy mm. build and take it over there. That would be really cool. Yeah. Well, right, yeah, man, you watch buddy Shreddy Life. Yeah. He does some cool shit oh, over yeah. there. All right. All right. There's just always endless opportunities outside of Australia that are just. Yeah. And yeah. every, money, every place has their own different mm. like style. Like obviously the UAE is the dunes and the power and like performance mods and then like certain areas of america are like full articulation buggy style big tires like the jeeps and stuff and then like yeah i don't know vietnam and indonesia and stuff is like mud runners and Mm. (laughs) it is cool we're so lucky in australia i think to have a bit of everything like we have rock crawling we have mud Runs, ruts, and like what? What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> no, there's no, there is a little tiny bit of everything in Australia. Yeah, a very, very little bit. There's a good moderate mix of, but the best thing we've got that I don't really see anywhere else in the world is our beach and sand driving. Like besides, like you can't go to like a beach anywhere else and just do like the islands we get to do. Mm, I that think that's a big I difference. Like you've got obviously the desert over in Dubai and all that sort of stuff where you've just got sand and dunes. There's a lot of that in America, eh? Yeah, I, I don't see it too much. Like you get, uh, you get like it. Cali beaches and that where the dunes are, but it's not the same destination. Like, no, there's there is a lot of that sort of stuff in America, like beaches and that where they, they drive. But the thing is, there you got the pre runners and you got the buggies. Yeah. And they're filming in the dunes. It's, There's it's a more lot motorsport. more dunes there too than here. Yeah, it's more it's, sort of like Dubai, but motorsport yeah. orientated. Like, yeah. Uh, it's different. I think um, like with that kind of travel and four-wheel driving and stuff, it is so good to have social media as a network because you can yeah. put it out there on Instagram. Like if I were going to go to America at mm. the end of the year, I could say, look, I'm heading to America. Um, who do I have on here? That is super into four wheel driving, so I can plan where to go and we'll do some trips. Yeah. And like, I'm sure there would be people out there that would be like, yeah, yeah, cool. Like, we've got a crew, we've got these cars. Like, mm. let's go on a trip. And that would be so much fun. Like, yeah. It's, it's good to like. The, that's just the best network. thing about social media. Like, anywhere you go, mm. you can sort of get onto someone. And if you break something or you need to find somewhere or just yeah. recommendations, like putting a Putting a story up with like a questions box. Oh, I'm heading up to, let's say I'm heading up to Cairns this week. What's there to do? What's around there? There's going to be someone up there that follows you or knows something yeah. that can put you under the right people. For sure. And even like, like I met you guys through socials. Mm. Mm. So it's cool to like network and yeah. stuff. Like if I <coughs> go to Vic and I, like I always end up meeting people. Like I, I love to do like little solo um Dargo trips when I go to Vic, yeah. and then I always end up meeting people, and they're like, "Oh, you're such and such," and then just get like having yeah. a yarn and having a good chat, and that's like that's so cool to meet people that way. Mm. It is the best way to meet people, I reckon. Yeah, someone who actually cares and is interested yeah. in what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, hundred percent. And the weirdest thing is, you absolutely know nothing about them unless you sort of get to reply to them on Instagram and see them and follow through their stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. but it's. It's good. Like I, I do trips down south to like Wagga not too long ago, yep. and it's just random people down there. Like, oh, dude, you're in Wagga. That's sick. Like, catch up or do this or yeah. like people going, oh, when you come down this way next, be sick. To, like, catch up and I like no idea who these people are. Yeah, but it's just yeah. the different interests of like you know, you say 
go out, meet new people, make yeah. friends. 100%. If you're a good person, it's probably going to happen again. So. Yeah. I was I also I say I was I get it when I try, like bring the blue down it even here yeah on the way I'll get people message me oh bro I just seen you pass through this town there's mm. like random people you've never met before either yeah so, like, they'll either pull up at the server and chat with you or shit and it's so good yeah that literally happened fun. to me someone that came up to me the other day when I was at the shops and I just got in my car to leave and yeah. like it was on the Sunshine Coast which is so strange because it's never happened to me in Queensland before and he just came mm. up and was like oh, hey, like, I follow you on Instagram. Like, I love yeah. your car. Like, I was going to take a photo of it, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's so clean. I was like, oh, yeah, don't look at it too closely. It's uh, good from afar, but far from good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's the other thing, though, is, like, I find a lot of people are so, like, scared or nervous to either oh, yeah. take a photo of your car or take a photo with you or ask for a photo. Literally. And it's like, that's literally why most of us do it, is for the fan base. Like, yeah. you, you do your own post for yourself, but then... You're also providing for an audience as well. So, mm. like, people go, oh, I've seen you go through. I was going to get a photo on that. It's like, come up and get a photo. I Say hello. Like, I've had a lot of people message me, like, after events. And they're like, mm. oh, I've seen you there. I wanted to come up and have a chat, but I was too yeah. nervous. Exactly, like, yeah. bro, what? We do not bite at all. Like, I, I love yeah. meeting new people and people that are interested in the same stuff. Yeah, you'll yeah. see, like, there's every single photo that you guys took of, like, us at... um. King of the Strip, I'm talking to someone. Yeah. Random, just yeah. a random person. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. You, you know who made a really good sort of example for it was Bridget. I was seen on her stories ages ago. She's like, I'm now making it illegal. Like sort of a sarcastic way. She's like, I'm making it illegal. If you see me on the highway, make sure you get my attention and take a photo with me. I was just like, that's <laughs> fucking sick. That's, yeah, good one. And it worked like, yeah. you see her like spot stories when she puts them up. It's like her just waving and smiling out the window like as loud as she could be. Yeah. I was like, this is awesome. Like that's, like, that's what you want. That's you what you don't about. want people to be like taking a sneaky photo of you because you're like, yeah. I don't know, make it a good photo and make it worth someone's while. Like they can make someone's day. So, no, yeah. like and sometimes it's it's hard though. Like sometimes it is a bit of a misunderstanding and and like you're not you can't always have the best day. But mm. like we try and try our best and be like, yeah, hey, like have a chat. And um, yeah. we when I was in Victoria with. I was with Paulie, Maddie and Blake and we were, it was like 7am, we were getting coffees, we hadn't done anything yeah. and we pulled into like a servo to go get food and there was like another car there kind of, they were like staring at us and stuff and yeah, um, we just went and did our thing and then came back and got in our cars and left. There, there was something that came up later like, oh, um, Paulie, Maddie and Shano are so rude. Like, they literally yeah. put on their Snap story and I got screenshot and sent to us. Oh, they're so rude. Like, they don't even say hello. Like, go up and I'm say sorry. hello. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, I didn't even realize you wanted to say hello. Yeah. Like, uh, we might have looked. I'm like, I think I have a resting bitch face, but like, <laughs> if, if someone said hello to me, but I'd be like, oh, hey, like, how's it going? Like, I, yeah. I don't. Like, sometimes it's unintentional that it might come across that way, you know? Mm. Like that, that's one oh. thing I hate or say do not do. If someone's like clearly busy doing something important or they're eating food or they're at a restaurant or whatever, do not fucking go up to them. Oh. It's just so <laughs> it's, I don't know, how, how do you put it? Like, I'm not going to go up to someone that I see. Like if I go see the world's biggest YouTuber right now tomorrow and he's at a restaurant eating dinner with his family, I'm not going to go up and fucking no pull way. him aside. I literally You're going to wait until they're done dinner, meet him out front of the restaurant. If it takes you half an hour, who cares? But you, you don't don't interrupt them for something that's going to cause a hassle to their yeah. life when all you want to do is get a photo. Like, yeah. they're probably going to be in a shitty mood. It's like at King of the Strip. So after the little fuck up with all my, um, I was packing stuff up at the camp. I was like, you know. And I had these two guys come up to me and they're like trying to talk to me about the car because they were clearly like they, they yeah. love the car and they just want to like meet me. Mm. And I was, I was not in the mood. Like yeah. everything that just went down, and I just said to them, "Look, mate, I'm sorry to be so rude. Like I feel like I can't, but can you guys come back tomorrow? Like I'm. Yeah, this is just not the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they left it after. I felt like a cunt afterwards. Eh? Yeah, but it's just yeah, it's unfortunate how yeah. it works. But most of the time at events, you're there to meet people. Yeah, and it, yeah. that's when it's easy. It's more so when you're out in public. Like I don't know. Going out, 
you get it all the time. If you go around the coast, like being on the coast, a lot more people are going to be on the coast following me, so they'll recognise you. Yeah. And a lot of the boys go too, and they say, oh, it's like, you know, one of the boys going through drive through or whatever it is, and they get seen. So like, just go up, say g'day. Like, yeah. it's easy. Like, if you see me at a bloody drive through or somewhere, I'll probably pull out of the drive through into the car park and say g'day. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. It, it's a tricky one because you never know what people are like, too. People are very shy as well. Yeah. yeah, I'm not like, it takes me a little while to warm up to people, but I'll always have a chat. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'll always try my best to like take time and if anyone has questions, answer them. The the best, actually the best example I've got is when we went out to Kenilworth and old mate pulled up in front <laughs> oh, of us and so ran up to the sweet. car. Like, what is that it, was LDW the best example. Media or no, something? No, no. That's where he's a photographer. He's a photographer. I think his name's Lockie or something from yeah, memory. I literally have him on Instagram. I, I literally gone, uh, like, we pulled up waiting for the rest of the boys. He's pulled in front of us mm. and jumped out of the car and ran up to the car. And I've gone, oh, shit, here we go. Like, what's, <laughs> yeah. what, 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 I, I just thought. What have I done this time? <laughs> I, I just thought, all right, what have we done? He came, he's like, dude, I'm a huge fan, blah, blah, blah. And he's just fun. like, I was like, oh, shit. So, and then I was like, oh, you know, these boys, like, roped Daly and Coop <laughs> no. and Luke and everyone into yeah. it straight away. He's like, Oh, holy crap. It was like, oh, he was at a meet for <laughs> the one you you and Luke took the Utes down to it. Oh, yeah. He took photos of your cars and stuff. Oh, That's no that guy. Way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, he, he just so pulls nice. up. He's like, can I get a photo and everything? And we're like, he was like almost just going to get a selfie in the window of the car. I was like, no, nah, bro, jump Everyone out. We're all in. getting together. Yeah. Massive group photo. It was sick. Yeah, like, that guy was pretty cool. He was really yeah. nice. I gave him some stickers. Yeah. It's just like, that's the way to do it. It's just... And, like, the energy that dude had. Oh, like, my God. He was a awesome. vibe, hey. <laughs> yeah. He was so cool. So, no, that's sick to see, but I uh, Anything yeah. else? I don't know. Oh, Life's bro. good. I'm, I'm Life's loving good. it. I'm fucking love it. it. How are you? Actually, that's one for you. How are you fitting into, like, the coast lifestyle, a new group of people, it's, mates, everything like that? Like, I think it's been smooth sailing. Like, everyone's yeah. so welcoming and you guys have just kind of, like, adopted me into the group, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I just, I, I knew, like, obviously you and Matt and Chloe before I moved up. Yeah. Um, And I'm not living on the coast, but I've spent most of my time here. So I coast. like it here. Yeah. Like, it's really nice. Well, technically, we do live on the coast. I live on the coast. North. <laughs> yeah, north. just yeah. further north. Four hours north. <laughs> oh, I always love when people ask me, oh, when are you moving to the coast? And I, like, I show them a photo of my apartment with the ocean. Like, I ocean live on the coast. I live on the coast, I think you get a lot of, like... Everyone thinks you're still at an Emerald. A I, lot think, of I think it's do. sort of missing yeah. now, though. Most, pe most people still assume I still live in Emerald, and they just they yeah. do not realise I've moved to Gladstone. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I think we sort of threw you into the deep end pretty quick when you got to the coast. So it was just like, Literally. all right, we're going out with the boys, we're going wheeling, like, come meet everyone. I think it was that like was the it. first Arvo. I think it was the first yeah. night. It was the first night you. We had the party. Yeah, I threw we a massive party. We literally threw a massive party and there was like burnouts, fireworks, fireworks fucking explosions. everything. I was like, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Yeah. But it's so much fun. Like we went, so we had the party the first night and then um, the next day we went wheeling at Kenilworth mm. and I think we ended up at the boys for a barbecue afterwards. Yeah. And then the day after that, we literally did glass house. So it was like bang, yeah. bang, bang. Everything's happening. Show you around the coast. And it, it always has been like that when I'm down yeah. here. I think that's why I like spending so much time on the sunny coast. Mm. Yeah. Like everyone's got something to do all the everyone's time. Everyone's doing their own thing. Yeah. There's always something to do. Like, yeah. Like we went to um, Double Island yesterday. Yeah. And that was the most incredible trip. That was a fun day. Jet skis next to the freaking Jet skis um, whales. And the whales came right so up cool. to us. Like it yeah. was so crazy. We know that you're not supposed to like drive near them. So we were stopped and they came up to us. And it, they they got so close. Like we were freaking mm. out. But it was the coolest experience ever. There was a lot of... Dolphins and whales out. Yeah, I've like, seen a fair few dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. Everyone's doing something. And, like, uh, that was just a kind of, like, random it, plan. Like, it wasn't yeah. organised to go to DI and then we just end up going. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, the Yellow Crow Mesh Mill, they took their buddy, their skis up as well. So we had three skis, Matt yeah. and Chloe's skis. And it was just stuffing around out in the water. And then there was that dude ripping around. Boys on the buddy Thundercat. Yeah. Just flying that was around my around. first like, time. Everyone was just rowdy. Like, it was just fun. Everyone's still doing their yeah. thing. It was good. It was was, good. I got to drive the jet ski for the first time ever. Um, <laughs> and I'm so sore today. Like, Same. My whole body hurts. Oh, I was fully like sliding the jet ski, doing like 180s and stuff. Like yeah. I feel like 
moving to Queensland has changed my whole lifestyle. Like, I don't think I yeah. would have done that if I lived in Sydney. It's a very multi-purpose active lifestyle. Yeah. There's always something going on. Like, I've got all my background sort of hobbies, I call them, which is like wakeboarding, yeah, fishing, wakeboarding. motorbikes, all that sort of stuff. Don't have bikes anymore. But it's just like there's always something to do that someone's doing. So, yeah, you know, it's it's good. Yeah. Definitely. I think I might be going fishing tomorrow. With Matt and Chloe? Yeah. Yeah, nice. So that would be so good. So fingers crossed it happens. Another one I'm missing out on. I'll yeah, <laughs> you've got to work. I'll be going Go. back to Wheel Go boys. to the mines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on the fence line out to Somerset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's good. Are you chasing professional photography or videography work or logo designs like you see from all the Hey Big Mac accounts? Well, Hampton's Media Services, located between Gold Coast and Bundaberg, can bring your profiles back to life with a new professional look. So go check them out and let them know that the Hey Big Mac podcast has sent you. Cheers, guys. Back to today's episode. Um, what other hobbies do you have? Pretty much the same, mate. Like you just said, wakeboarding, fishing, yeah. camping, hunting. So we like do a fair bit of hunting at the farm. Mm. Um, I think that's it. I can't think, think of anything it. else right now. Yeah. Building cars, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Spending money on cars. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to talk about your little business venture, your grab handles that you tried to start or you are starting? Oh, What's no, going on like with that? It was, it was just that I moved and I don't have the resources. Resources because I, I started like a little grab handle business with my friend in Sydney and he had the like proper trimming sewing yeah. machine, like industrial. And before you're all thinking they're not paracord. No, they're not paracord. <laughs> we Fuck were doing like cowhide handles. grab handles. So they're pretty unique. Like no yeah. one had done them before. And I literally just made some for my car yeah. and then people were like, oh, we want these. I was like, oh, okay. I've still got well, to like, fit mine up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. You're just lazy. <laughs> lazy. Yeah, firm. In a 79, yeah. it is a very cool handle to have. Yeah. yeah no, it I like it. So I don't know. There's, like, I haven't been promoting them enough to have a market mm. or something, but yep. if people want them, then... If you want them, check out the Instagram, have a I'll look at them. I'll try and post some more photos of them. I haven't posted anything lately. Yeah. <laughs> or hit us up and ask for a photo of them. Yeah, we'll send photos to you. They look really cool. They've got, like, different colour and pattern hides and stuff. And yeah. But, yeah, it's, it, it literally just was the move and it wasn't the right place in time <coughs> and... Like, mm. I still don't think I'd have the time to make yeah. bulk if people wanted them now. Like, mm. pretty much have to get to Sydney to get them made. Like, my friend doesn't have time to make them himself either. Mm. Yeah. I've got probably one last sort of follow-up question, unless you've got anything to add. You're good? Um, no. You don't have mind back. <laughs> I've got one sort of question that sort of relates to, like, a girl audience followers and that, and even just anyone in general. What would be your advice to anyone trying to get into like an Instagram lifestyle or YouTube or filming and just doing that general sort of stuff, wheeling, put themselves like, out there? So many girls like are starting to get into wheeling now. And mm. a lot of the time, the biggest thing you see is like, I don't know how to do any of this. Like, neither did I when I started. I literally didn't know a single scratch about cars. Yeah. And I just started pulling stuff apart. Learning from friends, that was a major help. Like, a lot of my friends have always been into cars. So, yep. like, getting taught that way or just watch YouTube videos. Yeah. And wheeling is literally just having a go mm. and not sending. I, like, it, the biggest thing for me is I hate watching people and they are just foot flat yeah. like there's a time and a place Sounds like, like I know, me <laughs> no but yeah, like no there's, there's <laughs> like to the point where it's dangerous yeah like is just and you're doing more damage than you should yeah. be like mm, you could yep. could have crawled that because it was sandstone it was grippy like yep. seeing that kind of stuff yep. like like i understand like in some of my videos like i wasn't the happiest with the videos of my car from Red Dirt, but I had broken my hub. Like I was in three yeah. wheel drive. So it looked like I was sending it like I really hard. I had the exact same thing with Tommy from Explore Life. Oh my God. <laughs> so, I was so disappointed. Like, cause I, I hate yeah. to send it and I would love yeah. to be able to crawl technical. everything and do technical driving. But when you have a broken car, like it's just not possible. Yeah. But f advice for the girls would be like, just literally have a go. And like full driving doesn't have to be as expensive like you don't have to have it 
super expensive car. Like you can get a three get three grand LN. I've been banging yeah. on about LNs lately. Yeah. I want one so bad. You can get a oh. three grand LN and just literally put a front locker in and just wheel it. Front locker, thirty twos, thirty threes, yeah, work perfect under them. Go for chuck it. Chuck a swag on the back. Go camping. Yeah. Like it's it's so simple. Like if you are and if you're putting content out there of. Mm. Like that, that is worth watching and you're putting good photos or you're wheeling hard. Depends. Inconsistency. Yeah, that's, oh, that's it too. Like I, I look at my page sometimes and I go, oh, last post three, four days ago and I go, oh shit, I probably should find something to do, but I'm not going to put something up there that's not worth it. Yeah. Like it's, oh, I only I've got if I have hundreds stuff to of things in my drafts that are just never going to see the light of day yeah. just because it, it either missed its opportunity or it's just not my type of post. That sure. It, awesome. Yeah. And just like, I don't know, the biggest thing was like tagging relevant brands. So like, yeah, like tagging all the cruiser pages. When I first got the mm. cruiser, that's literally what actually made, grew my following so quickly was all oh, the cruiser pages, like 70 series lane cruisers. They were sharing yeah. like every second post or something. I was like super grateful to them. That's another big one I hate in the industry is people treating... I was like, you've got reshare pages oh, yeah. and then people tagging me. Like I get yeah. Oh, yeah, 10 people, posts a day yeah. and I'm going, me too. I just sort of sit there and go like, now I've sort of positioned my page a little bit, unless I was involved in that content, even though exactly. if it might not look like it, yeah. unless I was involved in that content or it's a really good mate, I'm probably not going to share those I posts because I'm not a reshare like, page. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'll still go on there and like and comment, do something, Yeah, but it's – there's reshare pages there for a reason and they've got hundreds of thousands of followers. Probably like there's heaps yeah. and there's a relevant time to when you, you should be tagging all those big brands unless if it's a target thing for them, go for it. Yeah. Like, but you, you don't want to be flooding just well, constant Well, no one's going to watch your stuff if you, they, like they're following you for you. If you're sharing yeah. every, um, every other person's thing that they've tagged you in, they're mm. not going to, like, watch your stories. Yeah. Or you're not going to get engagement. Like, it doesn't work like that. I don't know. It just, <clears throat> it gets annoying then. Mm. It's the same as, like, like b- between all of us, we've got all different sort of brand ambassadors that we work with. Yeah. And, like, I'll jump on after a day of work and I've seen, for example, someone's posted a, a brand's posted a photo that's got, let's say there's 20 ambassadors for them. All those 20 ambassadors have just run out that you're mates with with the same followers and all posted their code. Mm. I do not give a fuck about making money, sharing that post or getting a code out there because I don't want to be the person flooding every single person's new feed with, hey, this person's doing a sale, here's our code. And then you click through the next 10 stories and it's the same post with the same code. Yeah. So it's it's a shitty shitty analogy, analogy for it, but it's... You're not going to see me post it unless it's unique. Yeah. Like, that's why I like working with some of the smaller brands and mm. that sort of stuff. Well, I guess that's good like advice too is just niche stuff. Yeah. Like finding your little niche. If you want to mm. go wheeling, go wheeling. If you want to go camping, go camping. Yeah. God, I saw, I saw a Subaru Outback on the beach like camping yeah. when yeah. I was in Sydney last. Yeah, true. Like I was like, yeah, go. Like, like getting out there at least. Like they mm. just... Doing something, you know, like yeah. good on it. Fuck, Maka, this is a really good uh, neighborhood you're in here. Eh? So oh, fourth time today I've heard I of that don't alarm. Know if you can hear <laughs> no. the alarm through the audio, it's probably not going to come don't through think on they the would be system. Able to hear it. We've got good mics at least, yeah. but there's a fucking security alarm on the building next door, and it's gone off fucking thirty five times today. It's messing with my head. Like, sort I can't your concentrate. fucking shit out. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Really. Oh, awesome. it will either run for the next minute or the next half an hour. So we'll have to just keep yeah, going. We with can it. hear it, you probably can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yeah. Um so that's the story what's on for of the RV life. anyway. Yeah, that's the story of Shano. So <laughs> it's not you, very uh, interesting. Yeah, she's gonna be on the coast a lot more. So if you wanna hear more about her or yeah. have a jump on Maybe we should organize We've actually a got a we've got a plan and I want some feedback on this. I wanna run a girls only episode. I want to see... And I'm going to be the host. Try and get Shano to host a girls-only episode. Let a group of girls just talk their mind for a <coughs> podcast. So. Mm. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions for that as well, like 
Send them through to Maca, send them through to me, to the and we'll page. just add them all in for content yep. for the yeah. girls. If you've got questions, guys, send them into the call in line. So, video and audio. We don't want text questions, if that makes sense. We want to be able to yeah. run audio questions through the podcast. And there's a bit of confusion with it, with how people are doing it. Either email in the clip, send us a video. Like, everyone's got a phone, take a photo, video. I don't, ha- there won't be. Um, video to it, but we just need the audio. Yeah. So send it through either to the podcast email or just the podcast on Instagram. Be super keen to like hear everyone's questions and yeah. queries on what. Mm. I don't know. And a few episodes back, Alec did a fucking crate call in. Oh, like, yeah. That was prime. So that's the example to set. So, yeah. Well, just want to hear the yarns and. S- send us whatever the hell you're about thinking the about. Stories. Yeah. No? All the stories. So, that's it. Oh, well, guys, make sure you jump over. Do you have any sort of brands, anything, people you want to promote, anything um, you want to promote yourself? Definitely Razorback. Razorback. Razorback has looked after me from the get-go. Yep. And um, they just are awesome people. They're an awesome brand to work with. I'm on my second set of seat covers now, like not yeah, due right. to wear or anything, but just due to the second ones at custom. Yeah. And oh my God, like I literally put them through hell. Like they get yeah. covered in water, mud, dirt. I had a set of leaf springs on the back seat yeah. for like from Sydney to um, Gladdy. And like they did not wear through it all. Like they were getting, yeah, right. yeah absolutely thrashed. Sure. And, covers, what, yeah. What's your code for Razorback? I think it's Shano underscore 10. Yeah, right. Well, sure. there it's you go. In my bio. Go get some seat covers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seat covers, um, Rhino Rack, yep. and Custom Steering Solutions. They are like, beautiful. Freaking awesome. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Now, the boys at CSS, they're buddy. He's got that fucking alarm finally turned off. Oh, thank, thank God. God. Um, the boys at CSS, I got my steering wheel. That yeah. YouTube video I'm meant to actually be dropping not this week, next week. Those steering wheels. I like, I hate to say it, it, but that is, like, a game changer because <laughs> oh, I yeah. have, like, buttons in the Subaru and I'd get yeah. out of the Subaru and get in the 79 and I'd be like, mm. like, go to press the buttons, like, fuck. Like, it's, I don't have yeah. the buttons. I can't change the music. And then just, oh, yeah. yeah. The so only car good. I've ever had buttons in was my Ford fucking Ranger. Yeah, was, <laughs> it reminds me I of that. Was, I was very suspicious on them to start off with. Yeah. Um, and I've always had, an, like, an N80 Hilux company car. And it was, like, had the buttons. It was great. Yeah. And when I drove your um, 79 yesterday, Shannon, I was, like, driving it, like, feeling the steering. I was like, oh, she is like, it's, it's so comfortable. comfy. Like, Mol- molded car. Like, personally, <laughs> I love racing wheels. Like, I love yeah. a suede leather Momo I've got wheel. I've the flat cool. but um, That was a really, like, it's a really nice steering wheel to be hanging onto in the mm. car, such as a 79. I reckon it's yeah. just, yeah. It's All the other so little well. interior stuff that he's yeah. coming out with, like, Got the armrests, yeah. like armrest, got the little trims around the vents, and yeah. he's just come out with yeah. um, rooftops as well. Yeah, so like that's That'd awesome. Cool. Like, and they look really, really good quality. And I just had a friend Definitely. in Sydney, p- um, yeah, pick one up as well. So. Yeah, no, good yeah. stuff, that's for sure. There's, there's definitely some good shit out there. <laughs> <laughs> there uh, is. There's good. Easy. I've been looked after. Yeah, as always. Jump on, screenshot the episode, tag us all on the socials. We'll reach out as many as we can. And thanks for coming on, talking shit. Hell yeah, yeah, thanks for yeah. having me. Let's go get on the beers. Oh, oh it's about yeah. time. Let's I go. Need <laughs> <a beer>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's go. Easy. Shake it back. <laughs> Done. Oh my god, that was rough. It got better though. Got better. Oh. Hello.